Hello, Araxi, Jackie, and Marlene. I want to talk to you today about Jorge Freer's book, Revisioning Transpersonal Theory, A Participatory Vision of Human Spirituality, published in 2002 by SUNY Press. It's a remarkable book, highly relevant to the field of transpersonal psychology in general, transpersonal theory in particular, and transpersonal research as well. I will talk about three specific things um, in his book. The first two will um, address the, his critique of the perennialism, the tendency to universalize spiritual experiences, particularly those experiences in you know, the upper realms or the spiritual ultimates, and how, prob how problematic that is. Then I want to talk about his critique of what he calls inner empiricism, the tendency to, in a sense, reify the inner experience of the researcher as the only venue. Uh, I don't think it is the only venue, but I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. And the third, uh, I'd like to talk about his participatory paradigm in general, in general terms, and to talk specifically about the terms that I would use to uh, address the encounter we experience with the sacred. So first, perennialism. I, I completely agree with Jorge Freer's critique of the tendency to universalize spiritual ultimates. That is, that at the higher realms of spiritual experiences, we arrive at some point at similar places. I don't know that that's true. I simply don't know, first of all. And not knowing is an intelligent approach, I think, and a scientific approach uh, to a, such a radical question as what spiritual ultimates might be. But in general, I would say that not only are there many paths up the mountain, to use the metaphor often used by spiritual practitioners, um, so up the mountain there are many paths, but even when one gets there, I don't know that those experiences will ultimately be the kindred even, or alike. They may be kindred, they may be aligned, they may overlap. I've sat in the presence of many spiritual masters. I've been very fortunate in this way, particularly spiritual masters in the Sufi traditions, Christian traditions, Buddhist traditions, and two indigenous traditions. In their presence, I do feel in my own body through resonance that they are not only unique in certain ways from each other, and I experience that in my body through what I would call sympathetic resonance in their presence with their bodies. They're, each one of these individuals is unique, but there is a kind of common congruent ground that is embodied at least in me, in their presence. I do experience them as aligned or kindred in, in a certain way, but not the same. So, of course, you know, it is my body that I am using to experience their embodied experience. And I have my own language and culture as well. But I still experience them as different from one another, although there are there's a kind of confluence or congruence between my experience of them when I am in their presence. So I honestly don't know if spiritual ultimates are the same one to another in these various traditions. I would say there's a kind of similarity and then a similarity that allows them to recognize each other despite their differences in traditions. But are their experiences the same? I rather doubt it, frankly. Certainly, what their teachings involve, their personalities of all these spiritual teachers were radically different. There was very little that they shared except some very, very basic and preliminary practices, such as breathing practices and so on. But otherwise, um, these were very different people in different cultures, and my embodied experience of them, when they were um, 
in tune with their spiritual ultimates, which is frankly all the time, um, they were different in the way I experienced them. Okay. The second thing I would like to talk about is his critique of what he calls inner empiricism within transpersonal psychology, and that we, as transpersonal researchers, <clears throat> have been too focused on the intrapsychic experience of the researcher or the participants, and both. And I think this critique is accurate. Certainly, that's where the late William Broad and I began, because in 1992, that's what we could get kind of a, a foothold in. But not only have the topics studied by the transpersonal researchers I've supervised changed and moved more in the direction of collective experience, group experience, uh, group dreaming, for example, in which different people dream uh, different parts of the dream, uh, but it's the same dream in kind of narration. There, there are a lot of experiences which are not uniquely singular to the inner experience of one person verifying that experience, but are shared and participatory. So I think Jorge's critique of the early research that we did in transpersonal psychology is, is, is very accurate, and I appreciate what he has to say. At the same time, I think he goes a little too far, that in making the distinction which he makes between experience and participatory events, he neglects the fact that events are experience and experience are events from the human perception, from the perceptual point of view. Um, events are experience. Experience are events. So there's a way in which he, he overdoes that particular critique. And of course, when you look at even any one individual person's experience sitting alone in you know, one study, for example, we are never alone. We are social animals. All our, our, our language and our the way we our experiences informed by our body movements and the things we experience as children and everything is informed by our social environment. We are social animals. We are never separated from our social environment and all our language and culture is influenced by the socializations we have received from our families and the culture in which we live or the cultures in which we have lived. So there's a way in which Jorge, you know, overdoes that particular critique a little bit too much. And it's a little out of date with where transpersonal research is now. And of course, where even a lot of qualitative researchers are generally in the field, there is um, a radical development in the field of transpersonal research now that is changing the whole discourse. And the third thing I want to talk to you about is his participatory paradigm, with which I agree. However, I took my own route to that experience, my own route up the mountain. It was perhaps different than his. My experience of the radical nature of the sacred is through nature. When I look at a tree, now at any rate, when I look at a tree and I'm encountering that tree through resonance, which is the way I see now. I see the tree as me looking back at me, or the tree experiencing me and looking back at tree. I mean, the encounter is dynamic, it's sacred, it's fluid, it's participatory, and it's engaging. And sometimes, even in a uh, in its radicality, it can be, or feel at least, co-creative. Like together in that encounter with tree, we are creating an environment that is both of us and is fluid and dynamic and po potentially creative. I've had some moments which are uh, amazing to me, actually, in nature in particular. And then with that starting point 
of developing this relational quality with tree or plants or rose bushes or whatever I have, whatever's around me, rocks, deer, turkey, chickens, um, those encounters have led me to feel the same way about people. So when I look at a person, it is that person looking at me, looking back at me, uh, or me looking at me, looking back at me. There's this kind of dynamic that has changed my participatory uh, engagement with the world, and this is accelerating and and dynamic in and of itself. So in that sense, I have come to agree with Jorge Freer's uh, participatory paradigm, although I wouldn't have thought initially of using the word participatory. I would have said embodied or mirroring the natural world or mirroring um, the, uh, through resonance, the environment and spaces and sacred areas in which I have inhabited. Or maybe I would have used the word embrace, but I'm, I'm content to use the word participatory now. It's, it's a good word. It's fine. All right. Thanks. Bye.